Will there be forests for tomorrow? That's a question that concerns almost all British Columbians. The public, the government, the Forest Service and forest companies want to be sure that healthy new forests are growing on recently harvested land. They want to know that BC's commitment to reforestation is being met. Under the Provincial Forest Act, timber harvesters are required to establish free-growing crops, stands of healthy trees whose growth is unimpeded by competition from plants, shrubs or other trees. They are responsible to carry out basic silviculture within an optimum time frame. This basic silviculture may include special harvesting methods, seed collections, site preparation, artificial and natural regeneration, brushing and spacing. The Forest Act and silviculture regulation require that a pre-harvest assessment be made to determine the best silvicultural treatments. This assessment is based on site-specific information about the ecosystem. Management objectives are chosen for a proposed cut block, and a silvicultural system is selected to reforest it. The silviculture activities are detailed in an approved pre-harvest silviculture prescription, a PHSP, which is a comprehensive plan for an area proposed for logging. A PHSP is developed for each proposed opening or cut block. The prescription specifies how harvesting will occur and the product objectives for managing a new stand. It specifies the preferred and acceptable tree species for the new forest, the target number of well-spaced acceptable trees per hectare needed to produce an optimum crop, and the minimum number of free-growing trees per hectare needed to create a free-growing stand. Provincial guidelines developed for free-growing stands ensure a consistent level of performance throughout the province. The PHSP also specifies the minimum distance between trees to qualify the stand as well-spaced and defines the density that causes excessive tree competition for dry-belt Douglas fir and lodgepole pine. If stand density exceeds the maximum specified in the PHSP, the number of trees on the site must be reduced and will require corrective treatment as part of basic silviculture obligations. The sequence of silviculture treatments for a site is set out in the prescription. A registered professional forester signs and seals each PHSP and is accountable for the content. The district manager approves the PHSP and any later changes made to it. After the prescription is approved, Whoever is responsible to do basic silviculture, forest company or small business program must follow the sequence of activities, meet the required standards and fulfill all the obligations set out in the PHSP before being relieved of basic silviculture responsibilities. But how does the district manager know if the major licensees or small business program have established enough healthy free-growing trees? How does the manager determine if a free-growing forest has been achieved? The answer rests with the free-growing survey. The free-growing survey is one of the most important surveys conducted in British Columbia. It determines if the obligations of the pre-harvest silviculture prescription have been fulfilled. If a well-stocked, healthy forest has been established for future generations of British Columbians. Free-growing surveys are conducted to determine the number of free-growing trees on cut blocks or openings. They tally the number of well-spaced, acceptable trees that are free from serious pest damage and from growth inhibiting brush, weeds and tree competition. When are these surveys conducted? The PHSP specifies the time periods measured in numbers of years after the commencement of harvesting. The prescription specifies the earliest free-growing assessment dates, the earliest period in which a survey can be done. It is chosen to ensure that regeneration is well established and that potential competition from brush is fully expressed. The PHSP also specifies the latest free-growing assessment dates, the latest period in which a survey can be done. The area must be free-growing by this time. If the agency responsible for basic silviculture acts promptly, reducing the prescribed regeneration delay period, 
then a free-growing survey may be conducted earlier. For example, if the regeneration delay on a site is reduced by two years, as shown here, then the earliest free-growing date can be reduced to seven years. The latest free-growing date would remain unchanged. To assess brush encroachment on well-spaced acceptable trees, a free-growing survey must be conducted between the period of maximum leaf-out and leaf fall. Where brush control has been done, a free-growing survey cannot be conducted until several seasons after treatment. In most biogeoclimatic zones, the free-growing survey cannot be conducted until two full-growing seasons after a brushing treatment. In the subboreal spruce and the boreal white and black spruce biogeoclimatic zones, the free-growing survey cannot be carried out until three full-growing seasons after treatment. This ensures that any regrowth or resprouting of the brush and the impact on crop trees can be properly assessed in the free-growing survey. But what about the specifics of doing a survey? For example, how does a surveyor know what species to tally? Or how old or healthy the trees need to be? The PHSP specifies most of these important parameters. It states which preferred and acceptable tree species may be tallied on a cut block. The PHSP may also specify the minimum number of preferred tree species that must be free-growing before a block can be declared free-growing. The age of the tree must be at least as great as the difference between the earliest free-growing date and the regeneration delay period. For example, if the earliest free-growing assessment date is nine years and the regeneration delay is four years, then a minimum age for a free-growing tree would be the difference, five years. A tree must be well-spaced to be declared free-growing. The PHSP specifies the minimum distance allowable. It is a critical parameter in determining free-growing status and must be carefully measured. The tree must also be healthy. Surveyors use field guides to identify pests and free-growing pest damage guidelines to determine pest damage and the acceptability of damaged trees. The well-spaced tree must be free from deleterious insect, disease, and animal damage. A surveyor carefully examines each tree to ensure its health. A well-spaced tree must not have any deleterious competing vegetation within the upper growing space of the tree. The surveyor examines a one meter radius cylinder centered on the tree and extending upwards. Within this cylinder, the height of the crop tree must be greater than the height of the competing vegetation, as specified in the PHSP. No deleterious competing brush can be present in this growing space. Only those herbaceous, shrub, brush, or deciduous tree species encroaching on the free-growing space of the tree affect its status. Other conifers within a one-meter radius of a well-spaced, acceptable tree do not negate the tree's free-growing status. In areas reforested with lodgepole pine or dry belt Douglas fir, the PHSP specifies the maximum density of a stand. In a free-growing survey, a stratum within a cut block is classified as not free-growing if 80% or more of the total tree composition is lodgepole pine or dry belt Douglas fir, and the stand density exceeds the maximum density allowable. The stratum must be spaced to the thinning density below the maximum density before the opening or cut block can be declared free-growing. The surveyor may do a walkthrough of an area or establish a number of survey plots to collect information. In areas that are obviously free-growing, a walkthrough is sufficient. The silviculture regulation requires that a report be prepared which will enable the district manager to determine whether or not a free-growing crop has been established in compliance with the PHSP. To gather information for the report, the surveyor records visual estimates of the survey stratum on silviculture survey cards. Estimates of the stand stocking, health, tree composition, and free-growing status must be able to withstand an audit. The report of the survey must be signed and sealed by a professional forester. In areas that are obviously not free-growing, the surveyor may recommend that the survey be delayed and that other activities, such as planting, brushing, or spacing, be undertaken first.
The surveyor may carry out a plantability, brushing, or pre-spacing survey while at the site and schedule a free-growing survey for a later date. In areas where the free-growing status is not easily determined, a formal survey is necessary. Initially, the setting up of at least five plots is recommended. When establishing plots, the surveyor collects information on the total number of trees, conifers, well-spaced trees, and free-growing trees. The surveyor also collects information on the average leader height, total height, and age of the free-growing trees. If the stand is not clearly free-growing, the surveyor may also collect information on competing vegetation. After establishing initial plots, the surveyor refers to the rules on sampling decisions in the silviculture manual. These rules help the surveyor decide if more plots are needed to produce a statistically reliable estimate of the stand status. If the estimate of free-growing stems per hectare is less than the minimum stocking standard, the area is not free-growing. No further plots are needed. If the estimate and its lower confidence limits are greater than the minimum stocking standard, the area is free-growing. No further plots are needed. If the estimate is greater than the minimum stocking standard, but its lower confidence limit is less, more plots are needed to obtain a confidence interval of plus or minus 100 trees per hectare, or 10% of the mean. The confidence limits indicate the precision of the survey results and the reliability of statistics in the survey report. If desired precision levels have not been achieved with five plots, the surveyor may need to establish more to collect further information. The surveyor then completes a silviculture summary form summarizing the plot information, the number of well-spaced trees, free-growing trees, and stand status. The surveyor also identifies the inventory composition of the stand and any recommendations for future treatment. If the survey has identified the block as not free-growing, the agency responsible must propose a prescription to establish a free-growing crop. This prescription may be outlined on the FS-659, but must be signed and sealed by a professional forester. The proposed prescription is then submitted to the district manager for approval. The surveyor may also recommend site-specific deviations from the PHSP. For instance, in some areas, the stocking may not feasibly be improved. Areas logged before 1982 may be declared free-growing if they have more than 500 well-spaced trees per hectare and the trees are at least 12 years old. In other areas, certain brush species observed in the one-meter cylinder growing space of well-spaced trees may not be considered detrimental to the crop. The surveyor may recommend that these areas be declared free-growing the district manager may agree with or reject recommendations to declare these areas free-growing, but they must be field-checked by the district manager or a representative. Reasons must be documented. Reports of free-growing survey results must be submitted to the district manager within the time period specified in the silviculture regulation. A report from a major licensee normally consists of completed survey cards and a major license forest cover definition form with a map. A report for an area in the Small Business Forest Enterprise Program normally consists of completed survey cards, history records, inventory attribute forms, and a map. The district manager is responsible for reviewing and accepting or rejecting survey results. If the information is complete, the district manager ensures that the major licensed silviculture information system is updated. Information submitted by the Small Business Forest Enterprise Program is entered into the History Record System. Both the Major Licensed Silviculture Information System and the History Record System are used to monitor compliance with PHSPs by major license holders and the Ministry. The Silviculture Audit Policy requires audits be carried out on a portion of the areas declared free-growing. The Silviculture Audit Policy specifies the percentage of field audits that districts must carry out on blocks declared as free-growing by major licensees. It also specifies the percentage of field audits that forest regions are required to do of the Small Business Forest Enterprise Program. 
The Ministry of Forests annual report presents the results of these audits to the provincial legislature and the public. After an area has been confirmed and approved as free growing by the district manager, a letter is sent to the major licensee or small business forester concurring with the free growing declaration. The agency is then relieved of further basic silviculture responsibilities. Because of the importance of free growing surveys, surveyors must be properly trained. They must know how basic silviculture obligations are developed and where the obligations are defined. Surveyors must know when a free growing assessment may be carried out. They must also recognize the characteristics of a free growing tree, the preferred and acceptable tree species, the minimum age, the minimum inter tree distance, the pest damage standards, the effective growing space required, and the maximum density allowed for certain species. Surveyors must understand the process for establishing survey plots, the sampling intensity, and the type of information to gather. They must also know what information should be communicated to the district manager, what decisions need to be made, and what checks are done on survey results. In British Columbia, the free growing survey is a cornerstone activity. Each year, it is used on approximately 230,000 hectares of forest land to determine if major license holders or the ministry, through the Small Business Forest Enterprise Program, have fulfilled basic silviculture obligations. Free growing surveys show the ministry, the legislature, and the public how well the agencies responsible for basic silviculture have performed. They measure the success of BC's reforestation efforts, ensuring that tomorrow's forests are growing today.